happen here today is talk about why this is happening. Why are we doing this? Um, so we're actually building on a lot of momentum that's been happening at a national level and, at, and also a state level. So there have been quite a few federal mandates that mandate um, sharing of uh, journal articles. The NIH started in 2003. Um, NSF had a lot of momentum behind their 2011 initiative. And there are you know, others, NASA and USDA, that have uh, federal mandates for sharing data. In 2005, SUNY launched a SUNY Digital Repository, which was based on DSpace. Um, some SUNY institutions are using that as their institution, but it's not particularly well developed. Um, and there isn't really a community of practice around how to populate a digital repository. Um, in 2014, there was a SUNY University Faculty Senate um, resolution to explore what open access would look like at a SUNY level. Um, and there have been a variety of library initiatives that are, you know, and some are more successful than others. Some libraries want to be more involved in open access initiatives, but maybe they don't have the staffing level. So there are a lot of opportunities, um, especially for an institution like SUNY, all of our 64 campuses, to really make a statement um, to help our students, faculty, and researchers understand and also um, you know, contribute to open access. So that's kind of what's happening, you know, just in general out there. Um, but in, uh, when was it? The summer of 2015, so just over a year ago, the City Council of Library Directors um, did some regional strategic planning. So the City Council of Library Directors was, I mean, there, there was, some action behind some of the initiatives, but it wasn't really a concerted effort. So we met regionally to discuss what are our priorities. Um, and as you can guess, we came up with a very, very long list. And a lot of those items was around scholarly communication and open access. So between the strategic plan and the University Faculty Senate, um, we decided that it was a really good opportunity to move forward. And then we realized that part of the problem or part of the situation that was preventing uh, more movement towards open access is that there wasn't a good common understanding of what open access meant. Um, and I don't know about you all, but when I first started talking about open access on my campus, it immediately uh, got turned around to, well, you know, why don't we have enough money to pay for the things we need? What about all of those predatory publishers? What about this? What about that? So it quickly became um, more of like a problem-solving activity versus a conversation about why open access is so important and how libraries can um, better interact with our students, staff, and researchers and faculty to basically bring some more visibility on the institution and on their research. So in the spring, um, the City Council of Library Directors uh, had a very, very nice poster session um, at um, SUNY Central in that gorgeous building. And because it was in Albany, we had a lot of folks walking through, looking at our posters. And there are actually three posters about institutional repositories. So what you're seeing is um, one of the surveys that the directors completed about um, institutional repository use. What are they using? who's using them, who's not using them, and this particular poster was spearheaded by Kristen Hart. Um, and this is available online if you want to look, look at it a little bit more closely. But we had a lot of this data, we had a lot of this information, and we kept thinking, so, so what's the next step? How do we get more people on board? And what we realized is we needed to have a common understanding, some common language, and also a jumping off point. So if we do have an understanding, what's the next step? And so the next step was this open access um, webinar series. So open access week is taking place this week, as I know you're well aware. And we stepped back and said, all right, we are probably going to be having activities on our campus. And we also thought about how we could work better as a system to 
reduce the duplication of effort um, because it, CSS is hosting five webinars and every campus is, or even half of the campuses are even hosting a single webinar. That's a tremendous amount of work um, with not as much of a reach as, as we would like because we really want to move forward, uh, you know, as a SUNY system. Um, and for smaller campuses like ESF, we don't necessarily have the, the power of numbers, among other things, such as University of Albany. So we thought, how can we do this as a group? And we had a very specific committee charge to educate and enlighten um, the campuses about open access and what that means and what that means to us. So the University Faculty Senate, um, uh, Darren Chase from Stony Brook University, was very actively engaged in creating that survey, sending it out um, to our campuses, and trying to get a little bit of data. So that is how we helped to craft the topic. Um, one of the most interesting pieces that came out of the Faculty Senate survey was there was a lot of um, you know, concerns or questions about article processing charges or ATP. And so we, we used that information to help guide the, the topic. Um, we worked with our Central New York Library Resources Council to host the webinar series. Um, they've done a tremendous amount of work for that. Um, so it's to educate and enlighten um, students. And we realized that very quickly um, there were many, many other people who were involved. So I think we did a pretty good job advertising. Um, what you're seeing on your screen right now is a list of the registrants um, by zip code as of about two weeks ago. Um, we have yesterday we had over a hundred people registered. Today we had close to a hundred people registered. And that doesn't include the number of people in the room. So if I was registered and I had four other people with me, um, you know, hopefully we'll have some of that data to share. Um, but it was very, very interesting. Um, SUNY Brockport had the scholarly communication uh, roadshow in late September. And I think that there were some people there uh, outside of SUNY, um, but regionally interested. So they've been able to host. Um, webinar viewing parties. So it's actually kind of exciting that even though we were focusing on three, the, the, the interest is, is very broad. We we're also registered on the openaccessweek.org website um, because the whole point of open is that lots of people can, uh, can access those webinars. So there are all of these activities happening and the City Council Library Directors tried to um, basically provide a little bit of focus. So what are we going to focus on? We're going to focus on education and outreach with the idea that once we have this in place um, and once we're trying to demonstrate a little bit of leadership as to you know, what the future of open access looks like and how SUNY fits into that, that space, we also hope to create um, some kind of community practice. But before I get into that, I want to talk about why I think that this is successful. And I know that it's only Tuesday. We have three more days of webinars. So I can't say that we're smashing success, but we're off to a really strong start. And I think that's because we had a lot of contribution. So the reason that there's a little space there is, like I said, I presented this at the uh, City Council of Library Directors meeting last week. And those folks um, at the top, there was a uh, people who were able to attend in person. So I was there, Kristen Hart from Maritime, Mark McBride, um, if you haven't heard his OER talk, um, you definitely should. Um, Mark McBride was very involved. Sarah Morehouse was involved. John Schumacher from SUNY Olin, Joshua Beatty from Plattsburgh, uh, Beth Brown from Binghamton, Darren Chase from Stony Brook, Donna Dixon from SUNY Press, Matthew Kopel from CLRC, Jerry Martin from SUNY Purchase, Kim Myers from Rockport, Annie from Maritime, and Carrie Hatch was also really, really involved as far as um, trying to help us you know, focus those topics and also to get the word out. Because when um, you know, it's one thing for someone like Jessica Clemens to post on a random listserv, um, but it has a different impact when someone like Carrie is behind us saying, this is really important, you know, here's some good work. And it's not, for me, it's not just about the number of people who raised their hand and said, this is important and I want to help. It's also a wide variety of library directors, librarians, people from the central office, people from SUNY Press, um, Central New York Library Resources Council. So it was a really good um, experience 
trying to work together um, to help people um, provide webinars or just provide a little bit of programming who might not necessarily have the time to do that. And that was some of the, the feedback that was really meaningful to me um, from the SUNY Council of Library Directors meeting. Quite a few people raised their hand and said, thank you for doing this. If your group hadn't done this and made it so easy for us to have these conversations, we couldn't have done it. Um, and on our website, which I'll show you um, towards the end of the presentation if you haven't already seen it, we also created um, a, a one-page handout that is easily customizable. We had it in a Word document and a PDF that either had the website link or you could download it and include your local um, your local space. So, you know, I'm hosting some of the events in the library and then a different building on campus. So once that was created, I could just download it, adapt it to my needs, and really that's the whole point of open access. Um, just to make it as easy as possible for people who wanted to have those kinds of events and those opportunities. So for me, it was um, it was successful just because there were so many people who were involved um, from a variety of different types of campuses and not necessarily just SUNY Library. So to me, that was really exciting. Um, and just because you guys might be interested, one of the uh, more exciting pieces was we used Slack to try and organize all of our um, communication. So I think that that worked fairly well, um, but it was kind of nice to have that Slack learning experience. Um, we tried to use it kind of like a project management tool. Um, so that, that was kind of interesting, and I know that some of our SUNY librarian groups are using Slack. Um, so we had you know three discrete tasks. We had three separate channels. Um, we had to go to Google Docs for a few things just because we needed some checklists. But it was really interesting to have that learning experience along with um, the, the webinar setup learning experience. And all of these uh, folks were very instrumental in you know, creating the website, creating the handouts, um, uh, finding speakers, reaching out to speakers, coordinating that, doing all of the training, setting up some you know, type of feedback mechanism. Um, so I hope that for those of you who had viewing parties, it was a very seamless, easy experience. But let me tell you, there was a tremendous amount of work on the back end. So I just really want to thank all the people who were able to help make this possible. And I'm really delighted that you're interested to hear about the process. Um, so the next step, well, we've got three more webinars to get through. Um, tomorrow we're talking about um, open educational resources. That's Allison Brown and Sunny Gentio. Um, on Thursday, it's going to be Molly and Amy from UB's The Reading Room talking about starting and sustaining an open access publication. And on Friday, Jill Ciracella from CUNY is going to talk about um, basically intellectual property, faculty ownership, agencies, um, and generally authors' rights. Um, so we have the next three days to get through, and I hope that um, you all will enjoy those presentations. But we're also trying to capture a little bit of feedback after the webinars. So what areas were of particular interest? Who was attending? With the idea that maybe the conversation doesn't necessarily just take place during open access week or stop after Friday. Really, if we want to be successful as a SUNY organization, we need to start to develop communities of practice. So for those of you, for, for those of us who are using digital commons, um, ESS has had digital commons since 2014. Um, I know U Albany has Digital Commons. Uh, Binghamton just signed on with Digital Commons. So maybe there is some community of practice type of activity that can come out of the people who are using Digital Commons. Maybe there's something that can be, you know, a corollary to that for people who are using DeepSpace. Maybe there are different groups that can get together to utilize the skills and expertise of our amazing uh, librarians in the SUNY system. So we don't necessarily have to start feeding every single institution, or maybe be a little jealous of our institutions who are doing something really, really well. We can just learn from each other and show the power of libraries uh, as a as a system, particularly as a SUNY system. Um, and I'm not sure how much um, you folks that you already have heard, but there's also um, you know proposals maybe change. Um, 
the SUNY Council of Library Directors, and right now it's just a big Navy, um, to move more towards a SUNY Library Consortium model. And if that happens, or even if it doesn't happen, you know, we're moving into a future where we should all be uh, working more closely together, we should be learning from each other, so how do we, um, you know, work within our existing structures or our emerging structures to have this, you know, this type of activity scale. Um, and I want to apologize, I just see the typo, it's not S-U-S, that's U-S-S, -S. so U-S-S had that survey, there's a resolution to explore open access, um, so what are the next steps for U-S-S, and should the, the librarians be involved, should the library directors be involved, um, how do we keep this momentum going? Um, and for those of you who weren't able to attend the, the session today at noon, it was Heather Joseph from Spark. And Heather Joseph um, and Austin Booth from UB have been invited to the SUNY Research Council in December to talk about open access and open publishing because a uh, provost Cartwright is very interested in OER, OA, different types of publishing. Um, so there's a lot of momentum that's happening. Um, and this is just a first step, or you know, maybe we're just continuing to build um, and with the idea that it'll, it will lead to some kind of action. So for more information, or that website that I keep talking to you about, commons.suny.edu slash open access, that's where we have a little bit of information about the uh, professional benefits or the promotion and tenure benefits. And that's been a really interesting conversation that's come through quite a few um, different outlets. Um, how do you value open access publications or the use of OERs in promotion and tenure? Because that's something that uh, faculty um, are particularly concerned about, not necessarily just junior faculty, but faculty who are trying to reach the full professor status. Um, so there's a ton of good information out there about open access. We've tried to focus as much as we can on that website um, to focus on the, uh, the webinars, the webinars will be archived there, talk a little bit about promotion and tenure, who's doing what, um, and just a general basic overview of open access. So it's not necessarily meant to be a clearinghouse of everything open access, although there are a lot of SUNY campuses that have really excellent, excellent libguides, um, things like that. And there's also a, a list of all of the committee members too. So for those of you who you know maybe have some colleagues that are interested in you know maybe keeping track of where the task force is going after this, um, I said quite a few times last week that the the open access task force is going to sunset rapidly after the 28th. But that doesn't mean that the work is done. It just means we we'll need a new committee charge. Maybe we need some some different committee members uh, just to keep. Um, the focus alive. Um, so I'm going to see if I can head over to that website just for a minute. Uh, looks like I closed the tab. Um, so I'm not going to go there right now. Um, but in a nutshell, that is, that's what we did. <laughs> um, and so do you folks have any questions for me, or is there anything else that you'd like to know or share with me? I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing that question. Was that about Mark McBride? We wanted to know if the Mark McBride YouTube, uh, or I'm sorry, OER talk was on uh, the website. Not yet, that's tomorrow. Um, so it's from noon to one tomorrow. Can attend. It will be archived. They usually, well, I mean, yesterday it was up before four o'clock. So it takes just a few hours for us to get the video up. But you know, probably um, within 24 hours is very reasonable. Um, and so what Allison Brown is going to be talking about is the SUNY OER services at SUNY Benicio. So it's not necessary. It's which they've created a model. Um, Long story short, they charge you know, just $10 a student per class um, to provide a whole host of support systems for people who might not you know, know how to find OERs, use OERs, adapt OERs, 
Um, so it's, it, it's really exciting. Um, and Allison will do a much more detailed job of telling you about you know, what it is, what kinds of services they offer, and who can be involved in that. Um, it was about promotion and tenure and, and how that fits in. And how it fits in. Yeah. Your discussion. So, so when, you know, and I'm just speaking from you know my general experience and also that my experience here at NESF, there's a, a lot of interest around uh, journal impact factors and metrics and you know how do you decide what impact um, traditionally, if you publish in a high impact journal, um, you have so many citations, your H index is of a certain level, um, and open access certainly can fit in some of those traditional areas, but how does uh, alt metrics fit into the promotion and tenure cycle? How do you judge impact if something is you know, just, just, just out there? So imagine a faculty member you know, shares a white paper or shares some kind of presentation with, with everyone, or a faculty member just has uh, published in an open access venue and they simply have more opportunities to be cited because they're not hindered by a paywall. Um, there's actually not a whole lot out there about um, how to value open access in promotion and tenure. Um, there's one, I think it's uh, institutes or university in Belgium where they have decided we will not um, consider items in your PNC dossier unless it's in our open access repository. So if you want your publication to count um, for promotion and tenure, you have to make sure that it's in the open access repository, which is very, very interesting um, to me to, to learn about that. I found out about that maybe three months ago or so. So Providing um, enough understanding about what open access is, why it's important, how it varies from the traditional model of open access, or excuse me, of you know, like the traditional valuation of uh, publications. Um, so it's a lot of that awareness. And for those of you who are helping, you know, maybe write NSF grants or who are engaged in faculty that write grants. Um, open access in terms of broader impact is really, really important. So what I see is, you know, my role is on my brain. You can help, you know, connect all of those dots. So open access, just because it might not be the highest impact factor, there are other values that are really important. And I think it's a, a bit of a mind shift um, in terms of, traditional promotion and tenure guidelines. So that's, that's not necessarily something that we would dictate as librarians, and that's not something that I would want to do anyway. Um, but it's providing enough understanding about what open access does and what traditional publishing or traditional metrics uh, don't display. So that's a very long answer to say that there's a lot of work that, that needs to happen. Um, and if there, are, there are just a few examples on the promotion in the website. So if you guys have any other um, ideas or if you're working on anything, that would be really great to share. Anybody else? Final thoughts? Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. And good luck with the rest of your open access weekend.